Hi guys, welcome back to the Laris Studios. Let's talk about media streaming with ExoPlayer. ExoPlayer is the video player running in the Android YouTube app. ExoPlayer is an application level media player built on top of Android's low level media APIs. ExoPlayer has a number of advantages over Android's built in media player and supports many of the same media formats as media player, plus the adaptive Format dash and smooth streaming like M3U8, um, Mport, and other live streaming links. Ezo Player is highly customizable and extendable and can be adapted closely to specific use cases. Uh, we have it running in Google Apps like YouTube, Google Play Movies, and so on. So, we're going to actually be creating a demo, just uh, an Ezo Player activity. Let's uh, see a uh, we're going to display this and uh, we're going to maintain the life cycle of the exo player uh, we're going to actually make it ui uh, components and ui visible we'll be adding adaptive video streaming uh, we'll be adding mp3 which is the audio and also mp4 uh, which is also another video format so without much uh, ado let me move straight to android studio we we'll have the uh, the source file of this particular application. Uh, right there in the dependencies, uh, we need to add the Exo Player dependency uh, because this is a library uh, which we need to integrate with Android Studio. So, with this line of uh, dependency, get to synchronize your radio and have your application center ready. Uh, right there in the values, I'll take it through on how we actually structured this uh, little demo. Uh, Move to the styles. You know, we have the Exo Media button. That's the post button. This is actually from the library itself. Uh, what about we call the drawable to the control we rewind and also the post description. You know, uh, let's look at the strings where we have the MP3, the MP4, and the dash. Gotten from uh, Google anyway. Uh, we have a link to an MP3 right there storage and uh, we have also for mp4 and uh, we have for YouTube you know, that's that so we'll be calling the string right there in the activity our dimension maintains the same and uh, we'll be looking at two layouts the activity may which can also be the activity player and the playback of uh, the control playback of the player the activity mail is just quite simple uh, we have the simple exo player view uh, added as a instead of the video view or image view uh, you add this once you add this uh, you get this initialized right then the activity you have uh, a screen like if a dark a black screen you know just to let you know that that is a player view right on this uh, screen so you can also use surface view you know uh, when you uh, we're talking about exo player one uh, Use surface view you can also use surface view with the exo player 2 as well and uh, call it and bind it up to the player so that's that for the uh, exo player and let's get to look at the playback controls that's the, the control whereby we we'll talk about the play and pause so that's the two controls we're using uh we can you can uh, extend more on the exo player controls where you have forward rewind and even next and previous uh, so we'll actually be using two of it, the play and pause, uh, just for the demo purpose. Uh, so that's just how our activity will look like. It's quite simple. And uh, we'll be heading straight to the main activity where I'll be uh, shedding more light on uh, how to make the exo player display. Uh, and right there in the main activity, there's just an all create method. You know, we actually starting from scratch. So I'll be showing you uh, the steps that we'll be following to actually have exo player. Right there running on the, the P on your Android app. Now we're going to set the bad weight meter to measure and estimate bandwidth. So this is what we'll be doing in this field. We'll be having a couple of fields for the playback position for the current video, for the simple as a player view and so on. So let's have the first uh, private. Here we have the fields, the default bandwidth meter the string tag we have the simple exo player uh, and also the player view 
and the component listener this uh, is a class we'll be creating a private class that actually uh, uh, gives room to other uh, listening uh, effects to the exo player where we have the timely change the loading change the player state change you know uh, on play error the position discontinuity and so on a lot of methods to override with the from the component listener our class we have the playback position the current window and the play when ready sets as a true volume so we'll be creating a uh, the component uh, listener class which go for a private class or component listener supplements so clear event listener and also video renderer event listener uh, we also have for audio so audio visual audio renderer event listener That's fine. Uh, we have a lot of methods to actually implement here, which you can actually uh, set up. You know, our uh, after you know having the field, we need to instantiate right there in the on create. Uh, we we'll have to call the component listener to instantiate with a new component listener class. That's this way. Uh, set uh, the component listener up and we're also going to have the player view which cast on to the simple exo player and we'll get the view ID the video view which is of the uh, video view Simple exo player view rather we need the view this time. Now we're going to override the on start, that's the activity we need to undo the on resume, the on pause, the on stop, and even the initialize player. But we'll first of all look at the four major uh life cycle on start, on resume, on pause, and on stop. For the life cycle, the on start, uh, the utility test for the type of SDK it is greater than 23, that's the API. It's going to run the initialize player method, which I uh, will be creating. For the on resume, uh, it's first of all going to hide the system UI and also test for the SDK if it's uh, less than or equal to 23 or the player is null. So it triggers the initialize player as well. So we're going to create that method. And for the on pause and the on stop, this is these two methods will call the release player uh, to actually uh, release uh, uh, the loader and uh, probably pause and stop uh, the the player. So that's the the two methods which we'll be looking at. So let's start up with uh, the first, which is the initialized player, private void. Initialize player uh, we're going to first for test if the player is null null if the player is equals to null We'll get the factory to create an adaptive video track selection, uh, which is actually uh, passing the bandwidth meter as its parameter and uh, using the default track selector with an adaptive video selection factory. So that's what uh, we actually did here. And we have the listener based on the component listener object. Uh, we set the video debug listener as well. The audio debug listener, uh, we set the player from the player view to the player, uh, we set play when ready, 
and also there's a seek to the current window and the playback position these are the two parameters passed there now we need to build the source URI where, it's, where are we getting our source from uh, which would trigger this method build media source uh, we're going to create the body of this method I will pass the URI based on the string from the string uh, if you notice I have uh, let's take a look back to the string XML uh, where we have uh, our string for the media URL mp3 mp4 and even dash you know these are the three major, major let's say the three ones will be uh, demo with the demo right there so in the main activity we are actually calling the mp4 first so we create the media source to either be true or false that's the two boolean parameters passed in and after this we'll create the release player let's have that other method with the release player so actually uh So, so in private. Okay. Void. Release player. Uh, if. Player is max equals to now. Uh, we get to have the body of these are uh, if statements. So this how to disconnect from the playback. Now we first of all get the current position of the player. We get the window index. Uh, we get the play when ready. Now we we'll remove the listener. We set the video listener to null. Uh, even the video debug listener also to null, it disconnects him from the player. The audio debug listener also to null, and we release the player. You know? So this will be called probably a non stop or a non pause. Uh, let's look at the media source. The media source actually used the data source factory, uh, whereby it's called the default HTTP data source factory. You know? And also we have the dash chunk source factory as well. Of which is being instantiated so we pass the data source factory and the dash chunk source factory uh, as the two parameters that's being returned from the dash media source uh, so this is our way the build media source actually uh, comes up and it takes the URI as its parameter so that's why we pass the URI of the source you know right there so that's uh, takes care of the media source uh, let's look at the ID system UI. How about we set the system visibility you know, to either uh, flag the profile, full screen, uh, the layout stable, immersive, sticky layout ID navigation, and also the flag ID navigation. These are the uh, different views that could uh, be gotten from the player. So that's just how uh, that actually is. Right there in the class called component listener. Uh, we're going to uh, override one very major method. You can decide to override it. almost all of them, but anyway, there's one major one which I would want us to look at right here, which is the on player state changed. So let's override that. It's a public. On player. State change. It takes a boolean. They weren't ready. Not an integer. The playback statements. And uh now we're going to have cases here. That's for the state of the exo player. Idle, buffering, ready, and ended. Uh, let's have that. So let's take a clue. Uh, the different exo player states can, it can either be idle, buffering, ready, ended. And if the state is unknown, you, know, you can actually undo all these uh, change. 
and we need to implement one other method to actually uh, make our component listener error free uh, let's override the public void and timeline changed which takes timeline Objects manifests. So we have the on timeline changed, and uh, we get we set to have the on tracks changed and the on loading changed. That other methods. And you may also do something here uh, for you to actually implement all uh, classes method. Just come, you see the above. Click on that small implement method. So once you click on that, you have a lot of method that must be implemented uh, right there from the component listener. You see that the code accounts, a lot of them buffering and so on. So go ahead. Uh, so that's it's actually going to get error free. Can you see that? You can. So look at all methods that can be called from the component listener. You know, quite handy. Or do the coder track you know, disabled and so on. Move to the video disabled. So with that, you have your application set and ready to uh, run uh, ExoPlayer from the MP4 uh, source. So you can actually change your source. Uh, right there from the URI pass over here. From here you change the source and uh, you're good to go. Let's get to look at the manifest. If there is any uh, inclusion we need to do right there in the manifest. So let's go there to the manifest. And uh, we have it as a launcher. That's fine. You know? We you need to add internet permission right there in the manifest. Uh, which uses permission the Android name will be Android permission internet uh, since we're calling strings right from internet right there so you close that right there so let's get to uh, launch this right there in the, in the screencast you can do that in an emulator in a device I'll show you a screencast of this.